Really not. I wanted to make a um, quick response to Steve. I'm gonna make a longer response, or maybe I don't know if longer because this might be long. But I realized that before responding, I was on my break at work. Oh my god, <laughs> stop. Okay, yeah, so I was at work. I was uh, just relaxed, you know, just having a sandwich, and then I see Steve's response, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you know. He's destroyed all... No, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't destroyed all philosophy or anything like that. No, he has not. Um, at most, he has made some really good um, arguments against uh, the dialectic of enlightenment. Uh, some of which... Some of which... Some of which... Uh, uh, some of which? Is that how you say it? Some of which I agree with. Um, yeah. I am not sure if that is the way you would frame that sentence. Uh, sometimes my English knowledge goes from a C1 into a A2. It's just how it is, especially after a 10-hour shift. But I just didn't want to wait because I realized that before making a response to the video and like talking or defending or not defending the electric of enlightenment, I needed to set the grounds of that video, of that response to Steve on the video about uh, his uh, questioning the dialectic of enlightenment uh, read along that I am doing. So um, you will understand why I need to make this video before uh, at some point during the video. Oh my god, I am so incoherent today. I feel like I should stop this video and start again, but I am too tired. So just... Um, yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> Um, I wanted to make a video at some point as a sort of like full stop to my academic life as a student of philosophy and make a video on what is university and why it sucks and why what is philosophy and why at least in university it sucks. Uh, which is not to say that philosophy as a whole sucks and which is not to say that the idea of university sucks. And uh, to separate those concepts and defend one and attack the other. And I wanted to do that when I finished uni, which is in April, June, something like that. I don't know exactly. But um, I'm going to have to give you a trailer of that through this video because um, Steve has made it very hard for me not to act as an um, um, advocate for philosophy. And because of that, I'm going to have to talk about myself before even talking about philosophy. And then I will talk specifically about his response and about his proposal of doing a read-along to, read together, which might be uh, the coolest project in which I have been invited in YouTube so far. Um, so first things first. And this is a great excuse to talk about myself, because one of the mistakes that Steve makes in his video, and he's made it before, is to talk about uh, my relationship with philosophy in terms of uh, me needing a salvation, me being confined or anything like that. And so did some of his uh, subscribers, which I'm sure some of them are here now, um, uh, because it is easy to assume that I might just be one of those, uh, you know, um, well-intentioned uh, curious and uh, intellectually hungry uh, kids that go from high school into university without having uh, tried much else and choose philosophy because um, multiple reasons that most of the times are biased and that and ends up with them sort of like becoming some sort of um, fans of a specific philosopher or uh, just listening and taking very much as um, as a some sort of like listening dogmatically to philosophy and following um, you know their divorced uh, <laughs> misogynistic and their uh, highly addicted to tobacco and alcohol uh, philosophy teachers all of that is true about philosophy teachers like most of the Steve's uh, critiques of philosophy are true most of them not all of them um, especially not all of them if we talk about philosophy on my own definition of the subject, because philosophy uh, has a, it's a very insecure um, uh, discipline, especially since science and um, the arts emancipated from it. And it's spent uh, the last few centuries trying to defend itself by defining what it is. And uh, no one really has achieved that. Heidegger used to say, um, philosophy is the study of what others assume to be self-evident, um, which it can be, you know, like if you say, um, yeah, I don't know, for example, natural sciences study nature, right? But uh, by studying nature, they don't stand, study, for example, uh, cars, right? Why cars are not nature and why 
And so there's a, a whole philosophical reasoning behind the study of natural sciences and why they study certain things that are not created by man generally, human uh, humans, and there's other things that are, right? Um, so philosophy studies the philosophical premises behind that. Other people is like, um, especially in the modern era, it's like a systematic explanation of the world that is coherent. And because of that, sort of like they say, um, to grow, you have to limit yourself. I think Goethe said and Goethe, Goethe, I don't know how you get it, I don't know how you pronounce it in English, but uh, the idea is that like if you're building a house, uh, you cannot forever expand horizontally because then you will never get beyond the foundations, so you have to limit the system, which means that at some point you have to make a, a sentence, you have to take a premise that is not fully true, because the goal of philosophy is not so much um, obtaining truth, but interpreting uh, the world, and for that you need a, a sort of like one coherent framework, right? Science is a coherent framework to study, but the problem with science is that cannot it cannot within science you cannot um, question some of the philosophical premises that it has, um, or at least this this would be the argument in that uh, specific. I'm not making any. I'm just explaining different conceptions of philosophy. My concept of philosophy is much more um, sober and humble, uh, but I'm not gonna be talking about that yet because uh, way before. Uh, talking about my own conception of what philosophy is, which really goes down to the etymology and the origins of what philosophy was. Um, I have to talk, as I said, about myself and then about Steve's response and then about the read-along. So, why myself? Well, because I really, really like myself. I'm, <laughs> I'm in love with myself and it's always good to, to, take, uh, to indulge in that uh, when someone gives you a good excuse. And here, uh, my point is that um, uh, Steve thinks that he needs to save me because I might just uh, have adopted a toxic identity that uh, is going to sort of like haunt me through the rest of my life. He thinks that I am about to marry to the wrong woman. Uh, <laughs> however, um, that is not true because I have not gone directly into philosophy. Philosophy is not the first, not the second, not the 50th. Uh, forming which I have satisfied something, which is the one thing that I am pretty much committed to, which is um, a hunger for knowledge. I'm curious. I am curious in every single way. I have always tried to learn and live uh, new things. Um, me being here now and you listening to me is a product of that as well. Uh, since I was 15 years old, I've been in charge of my own life very much, independent, basically, economically and physically and spatially in every single way. And I have been traveling and working. I've had dozens and dozens and dozens of jobs. It's like I've had more jobs and I've lived in, lived in more countries than lived, not visited. I don't, I'm not a tourist. When I go to a country, I migrate to that country and then I emigrate whenever, I'm, I, whenever I feel like I've learned enough about the culture. Um, um, yeah, so I've done that many, many times. And every single time that I did that, I was not looking for money. I was not looking for some sort of product. I went, didn't go to the country to learn something so that I could get, get something. No, the learning was pretty much the thing in itself. It was the final end of everything that I did. Now, at some point, um, a couple of years ago, I was uh, working as a scuba diving instructor and cave diver in Mexico, I think. Or was it Croatia? I don't remember. And then I got a job online uh, making uh, adult content with my girlfriend of the time. So we started working online. And just as we got that job, uh, COVID started. When COVID started, my, pers my ideas, my plans of traveling, which was the main way in which, remember, the only constant in my life has been um, my hunger for learning, for exploring, for experimenting things, um, could be satisfied, uh, was suddenly uh, blocked and I had to stand, spend a bunch of time in a room, which meant that one of the benefits of that is that I got to paint, I got to write, I got to uh, listen to music, I got to watch movies and I got to read a lot, a lot more than I used to. Uh, I never I, I never was a non-reader, but I never was a reader either. I was one of those people that reads a couple of books a year and say they are a reader, but they are not really, right? It was only during COVID that many things changed within me. And it was not so much because they were my number one choice in life, but because um, that sort of like constant exploration, just being intellectually alive, just being uh, observing new things uh, needed to be satisfied. It's just a drive that I have. That's where university comes in. 
uh, I never need a university to to acquire. I like I I don't feel like I've learned much from university to be honest. Uh, to me, it's free to study in the UK because I arrived before Brexit. I at the time when I was considering it, I thought uh, the fact that I am only a few days away from from Brexit. Uh, it's my, like I took it as a sign that I should probably do it in the UK because I, if I would have done it anywhere else, I wouldn't get so, some of the benefits that someone gets from studying in the UK as being part of the European Union or at least they used to before Brexit. So uh, it's not like I made a big investment in coming into uni. It was pretty much a, a, another way, another like getting a new job, like going to a new country, something that I had been doing for a while and now I'm just like embodying a new identity. That's all I'm doing. Um, which is not to say that I've changed my personality or that I have some sort of like uh, bipolar, uh, whatever, um, each time that I sort of um, change job or whatever. And it's also not to say that I need it. I don't need to change uh, continuously, although I love to change continuously in order to satisfy this. I could be very much like Steve is in a room and read, I don't know how many hundreds books I'm, uh, uh, of books a year, but I, but I don't do it that way, by the way. My phone uh, doesn't have much battery, so if, if this video stops here, I am not gonna um, I am not gonna make another video again because this is the second time I'm doing this. So if the video stops here, I'll I'll make another video at some point whenever I get a, a memory again, and then Steve will have three responses just for his, three responses just for himself. Um, but uh, but that being said. What I'm trying to say is that when I arrived to university and I started reading philosophy, I started reading philosophy in the same way that I tried surfing and I liked it and kept doing it in the same way that I started reading Tolstoy specifically and I liked him and kept reading him until suddenly I didn't like him. Uh, and um, <laughs> that is not to say that I think he's a bad writer, but what I'm trying to say is that I I am like... I am not a philosophy student, um, full stop. There is nothing to save me from. I'm here today talking about Adorno and tomorrow I might be reading Jane Austen. Um, and I won't give more importance to one thing than the other. And I am not writing a book with my partner about uh, the dialectic of enlightenment. That I'm going to emphasize that in the next video and in every single moment. We are not writing a book about the dialectic of enlightenment. We are writing a book about uh, something very similar to the book idea that I mentioned in the previous um, video of the book Never Written, The Price You Paid. We are writing a book about um, nature being objectified through instrumental reason, which is something that is on the Elective of Enlightenment and other books. And it, but it's more about a, una, a book that is not just going to be philosophy, there's going to be poems, there's going to be everything. Mm. And it's just an exploration in different ways and from different frameworks and perspectives of a humanity's relationship towards nature. How, that, how has it changed and why it's fucked the way we treat nature right, right now? Uh, sorry for swearing. I am not as uh, polite as um, other booktubers are. I come from a different culture and a different background. My teachers were so were others, and uh, <laughs> uh, when I say when I swear or I say something that might sound rude, I promise I don't mean it. I but I don't want to be inhibited in booktube and uh, just because uh, you know someone who might not know me watch this video and think that I am being. It's not the case. I am just expressing myself as I normally do, which, yeah, it might be rude. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so that's it. I don't need salvation. I'm beyond salvation. Um, I don't need to be um, protected from anything. I have uh, encountered that attitude from many people since I, I remember. I have been working since I am 15 years old. Uh, which means that for many years and still now, pretty much everyone I work with is three times, four times, five times older than me. So I've been, tra I've been listening to those kind of comments of uh, sort of like someone trying to um, teach me something, some adult, generally a male, uh, being paternalizing me in some way uh, for a long time. So I just want to I just want to say that you can tell me that I'm wrong, but don't tell me that you're going to teach me the way towards uh, the light, because that doesn't sound very different from what uh, Hegel would say. Uh, now, that all of that being said, <laughs> and again, remember this, as he, Steve said, this is very friendly. Steve is my favorite booktuber. Like, I, I couldn't love his channel more than I do. So I am just saying that that is the case. 
and uh, that is not going to change. I, I, um, at most, I might be more co uh, um, convinced of the wrong argument, and I'm always happy to change my mind if I'm proved wrong. I feel like I will have to think about some of the arguments Steve made, and um, and and make my video response accordingly, probably on Sunday, as I said. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that before doing that, if just in case in the next video it looks like I am defending the Electric of Enlightenment, uh, it was very, very clear that I am not a uh, Adornian uh, or uh, any, any, how you say, like, uh, or any ism. I am not any ism. I practice many isms. For example, I have a plant-based diet. I'm, I'm not vegan because uh, life is more complex than any ism. I am Greeks. Uh, my real name, by the way, is David. But I Greeks is my pen name and a uh, name, and I like it more because it's more original. Um, but um, but I I won't be trapped in any framework. I am a framework nomad, if you wanna take it that way. And any every single um, conclusion or conviction that I have, I have achieved through being able to step inside other people's frameworks and um, observing. Uh, um, contrasting and living with what I find useful and leaving behind what I don't. Um, so that's that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to say. Now, um, comma, <laughs> or not really comma, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> that being said, I the fact that I don't need to be protected from philosophy doesn't mean that like, uh, Steve, you are entitled to want to give me away from reading philosophy. But if what you want to do is to give me away from reading philosophy, knowing that I do not need salvation and knowing that um, the only thing that is really correct uh, res in respect of my relationship to philosophy from your own perspective is that I would be wasting my time by reading philosophy. If, if, if you are even willing to read a work of philosophy every month with me for a whole year, which to me sounds very painful, uh, if I imagine myself in your skin, why not, like, if what you want is to keep me away from philosophy, why wouldn't you propose something else? And um, I will, of course, be sending Steve an email, but... Um, the thing is that I have already read Locke, and I have reread and read and reread Aristotle. I find Aristotle and Locke two of the most boring philosophers ever, <laughs> so I am not looking forward to reread them. I have read The Prince for Machiavelli. I cannot say that I understood it because I read it a long time ago. And I, but basically all the Steve books that you Steve proposed, um, I have read. I have, of course, I read Peter Singer. It wasn't. It didn't feel nuanced to me uh, when I read it because I had already been uh, convinced by those same arguments for quite a while. Uh, um, with my, of course, the book had been written from before. That's what, how those arguments got to me before I, the book got to me. But uh, what I mean is that I've I've done my 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 time reading philosophy. We can read some philosophy if you want, but um, I would much rather that you take me through works that you consider uh, achieve what philosophy only ever sometimes tries and, and generally fails at achieving, which is like some sort of like greater knowledge or just some significance within the literary cosmos, right? Why not instead of reading, what did you say, Plato in, I mean, Plato, oh my God, Plato. I don't want to reread Plato. I agree with uh, what Steve says about like Plato not being that good in terms of literary quality. Um, I I would much rather like maybe on the first month you let me choose a work of philosophy, and I choose one work that we read together. I'm talking now directly to Steve. <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm still here. I know you are there. Um, but um, what if every other month after January you choose a book, any book, that will feel uh, that um, hunger that I have in the same way that philosophy does. Why not read, I don't know, just giving you ideas, The Divine Comedy, Comedy in February. Why not read some of your favorite books? I'll, I have so many that I want to read. Why not read Obit's Metamorphosis on the, um, March? Why not read, um, I don't know, you, you tell me. <laughs> I... 
I would be very happy to read books that are not philosophy uh, in so long as uh, they still have that sense that philosophy gives me. I am, I am, I, I like to feel like my time is spent doing something significant and uh, I find it much harder to read books like uh, Neuromancer, Neur Neuromancer from Gibson um, that only give me sort of like uh, enjoyment but not so much, um, how do you say, chin rubbing. Like I like, I like the the armchair and the rubbing my chin. I do like that. But I feel like that can be achieved uh, with, but also without philosophy. And since just like you approach the Bible, I approach philosophy, which is pretty much as literature. literature. I think that, you know, I've, I've achieved, um, I've sort of acquired um, knowledge or um, extracted conclusions from literary works just as much as I have from philosophy. Philosophy more explicitly is trying to present arguments, but that is not to say that it does achieve plausible conclusions more often than novelists do when they are trying to defend an argument. Um, for instance, for instance, I feel like um, a Sola, you know, many of the arguments that Sola was trying to make in his sort of like naturalist um, novels were not very different from those of Marx, right? And I feel like maybe Sola conveys some, conveys some of those arguments better in his novels than Marx in his works. Um, that's just an example. Um, all I'm trying to say is that maybe let's expand the possibilities of that uh, read along. Because to be honest, I you've you've very much got me at the end of my philosophy journey. Which is not to say the end of my philosophy reading journey. Is to say the end of my sort of like let's read the philosophical canon. Uh, let's um, talk about these works. Let's take them very seriously. Let's reread them. Let's pretend that they're very, very important and that they're getting at something like that is really, really, really true with capital T. And then um, once you finish the book, let's consider if that was true or not. Uh, you've, you've got me pretty much at the end of that. So I am not looking forward to reread um, all of Plato as I have read and reread all of Plato. <laughs> and I don't know if I have reread all of Plato. I've reread main, definitely his most important dialogues, but yeah, I, I'm not looking forward to that. Um, I, I pretty much, I much rather take care of my own philosophy readings from now until I finish uni, excepting, except for one philosophy book that I could choose for us to read together in January. And in exchange, you can make me read and I will read with you. I will read with you 11 other books uh, throughout the other 11 months of 2024. I think that that's not fair, but uh, I mean, it's a win for you. So yeah, I, I think, um, I think, I think I said what I needed to say. Now uh, I made you wait, but my, uh, because I kind of wanted to do this when I am actually ready for for um for a long video about philosophy, what is said, what it is not, and what's wrong about it, and what's right. But since we are sort of like talking about philosophy, I said I was gonna give my opinion about what philosophy is. It's very simple. We were in Greece, and there was these guys, you know, like Gorgias, for example. He told you that he he would um, he had a an advert that he uh, like a post that he would put in the in the walls and he would say like I can't convince anyone I can't defend you in any trial I can't defend you anywhere uh, I can't convince anyone that you can fly basically he was basically saying that through rhetoric through the use of language he could uh, defend and convince anyone that any lie was true right um, Gorgias and his kind were called sophists or rhetorics people that like uses language and um, log logical fallacies in order to make people arrive to wrong conclusions uh, because it doesn't really matter to which conclusion they arrive. Like to the sophist, that, doesn't, that didn't really matter. It was like an exercise, a sport. Just like for poets, right? That's why um, Plato famously exiles the poets from his ideal republic for a while. He brings them back at the end, but at the beginning he, he exiles them uh, because... Poets, just like sophists, just used language and didn't have any sort of like um, desire to represent truth through language. Now, uh, on the other hand, um, there was these people that uh, were, they called themselves, you know, like Plato. He's uh, like, okay, those are sophists. We are philosophers. A sophist, 
a sophist is um, someone who calls himself wise man. Like the translation would be something like that. I'm wise, right? That's way more um, arrogant than calling yourself philosopher. I I consider Steve a philosopher. I consider myself a philosopher. I consider pretty much everyone I know who uses reason in order to uh, arrive to possible conclusions and observe the world a philosopher. Philosopher means friend of knowledge or lover of knowledge. Uh, any scientist um, is a philosopher. Any scientist which who is like genuinely doing science for the sake of um, acquiring new data or whatever. But um, my point is that that is philosophy for me. It's um, friend of knowledge. I'm a friend of knowledge. I'm a philosopher. Nothing else, you know. No, they, I, yeah, men rubbing beers and 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 saying like uh, I, I I need to acquire truth with capital T or I've solved the world or you know all this you know like from Hegel Kant all, all these people they are doing systematic philosophy. They are in the modern era. They are like uh, they have very uh, grand ideas about themselves. And they wrote in a very obscure way, probably to defend themselves, partially because some of the claims they were making sometimes were not uh, probably um, very, would not be very welcome if they were understood. Uh, I am, I believe that one of the reasons why philosophy is so, so used to be so obscure is because it was one of the few places in which you could put your ideas and present them to, to, to people who normally cut your head for those ideas in a way that they would not really be able to tell. And if they were able to tell, by the time they did the whole journey of understanding what you're writing down, uh, they would have already got sort of like uh, gone through the amount of education required for them not to respond violently to your ideas. I think that might be one of the excuses, one of the reasons why philosophy is so obscure. I'm not sure. I'm I'm I I agree that uh, like most of philosophy is written very badly, and I agree that most philosophers are what like and this is one of the most true statements in the history of philosophy is Nietzsche's. Uh, philo uh, most philosophers are auto autobiographers, are doing autobiography, which is to say that they are just trying to so, like feed you what they believe, um, make you a copy of themselves, just like most people does. Um, not most people, but like most people within philosophy, definitely. Um, I, I, but th the fact that there's a, a lot of people doing that doesn't mean that that is philosophy. Th certainly, there are definitions that you, you could give to the word philosophy, that um, ascribes to that, but I mean, like with other words, we've 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 uh, we've uh, decided, we've changed them through time, right? The word feminist was an insult from from people from the far right to men who used to defend the suffragettes, the the women that were sort of like uh, um, asking for their rights, and it became a word that just defines people who define who is like in favor of like. Um, equality between the sexes or of, or uh, female liberation, depending on who you ask. Um, but uh, with the word philosophy, right, it's like we have not gone through that point where there is a consensus about what the word means. I don't really care about um, Hegel's uh, theological ideas. I agree that most of philosophy is um, disguised uh, theology. I agree. Um, but philosophy itself, you know, like there's a lot of people calling themselves that, but philosophy itself is a philosophy. I'm a friend of knowledge. I like to learn. Teach me something. Sure. That's it. No, no real um, pretension of anything in that. I think that is uh, something something very, very simple, very... I, I, I consider myself humble before saying that. I could say, in the, on the other hand, that I'm a sophist. Most guys out there that Steve is attacking that call themselves philosophers, they are really sophists. What they are doing is calling themselves, wanting to, be, to teach you, to show you that they are wise and trying to show you what they know. The first guy in the history of philosophy, the only thing that he knew is that he did not know, that he could not know. What is there less... Um, uh, or, yeah, less um, <laughs> self... Um, Engrand engrandent, engrandient. Oh my God! Today my English is really going away. Uh, so before it completely fades away, and this com becomes a video of me talking in I don't know Esperanto or Sanskrit. Who knows what this is gonna <laughs> turn into? Uh, I am gonna say bye because I feel like I've been rambling now for a few minutes that just didn't need to be in this video. 
and I don't want to make you lose your time and I don't want to lose my time. Um, I need a shower, <laughs> I need to sleep and uh, yeah. I'm just going to say that I say yes to the read along, but uh, I much rather do it on the conditions that I've sort of like set rather than just reading a philosophy for a whole year. I, feel, I, I think we both prefer that. And uh, yeah, uh, just to wrap up, that's one thing. Another thing, I don't need salvation. I don't don't think that because I'm young, <laughs> I don't know and I have not lived and I have not been uh, presented to people who wanted to sell me um, untruths or lies uh, throughout my whole life. And I am not in need of an identity. I'm not in need of a framework. I have my own, so no worries. And um, what was the third thing? I forgot about the third thing. And yeah, philosophy, philosophy is just like, cool, to learn things is cool. Um, but, you know, I'm doing philosophy when I'm reading Darwin, and I'm doing philosophy when I'm reading Kant, and I'm doing philosophy when I'm reading Annie Dillard, and I'm doing philosophy when I read Angela Davis, and I'm doing philosophy when I read uh, when I read Steve's book, if he ever publishes uh, his NaNoWriMo book, because it sounds very interesting. That's all. Uh, have a nice evening, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye, Booktube.